pleasure of uh, introducing you to David Perlin, known, of course, the vast majority, if not all of you, as, as one of the, the star researchers in the field of, uh, of antifungals, but also as somebody who's, who's worked hard in other fields as well, in antibacterials and antiviral infections, is a clinical academic with an outstanding record in this, in this area. Uh, Professor of Medical Sciences at the Hackensack Meridian School of Medicine, Professor of Mic Microbes and Immunology at Georgetown University, and has uh, positions elsewhere, emeritus positions back at Rutgers. So uh, we um, asked David to kick off the second session with a more patient perspective, as somebody who actually does see and treat patients who have fungal infections, so we're very pleased to, to welcome you and thank you for your presentation, David, and over to you. Um, thanks, thanks, thanks very much, Neil. Um, so uh, what I wanna do today is, um, is to humanize uh, what we're talking about. So while this meeting really um, very nicely addressed, will address drivers and mechanisms of drug resistance, uh, as well as some of the solutions, uh, and you can see many of those uh, mechanisms here in my group and many others uh, who are out in the audience have contributed significantly to these mechanisms. But really when we're talking about um, drug resistance, therapeutic failure due to organisms that have become uh, resistant to drugs, it, it's really about people. Uh, patients uh, and their families, as you can see here, this is, this is what drug resistance uh, looks like. And these are the people who are impacted by drug resistance. And that's why uh, we're, we're here today. And so if you, if you take sort of a patient perspective and say, um, so what is the most feared comment uh, that you can get from a doctor? It's usually you have cancer, uh, we know about that. Uh, the second most feared comment is your infection is drug resistant. And these are in, indeed powerful and profound you know, uh, statements that profoundly impact both patients uh, and their families. And it's important to realize that we're always dealing with patients um, and their, their families. Um, but to, uh, to humanize this even more, I'll give an example of... Um, uh, of uh, Meredith Littlejohn. This is a, a patient story. I'll talk about these in, in, in a minute. So um, Meredith was essentially um, uh, an 18 year old um, high school senior on her way to uh, Emory University. She was diagnosed with acute myeloid uh, leukemia, AML. Uh, in November of 2012, she underwent a number of rounds of chemotherapy for the next few months. Uh, she had some brief home respites um, until April when she went into remission, and so all was pretty good. Um, then uh, by June, she suffered a relapse. Um, she resumed treatment, started to do well, and then developed an invasive candida infection. She responded initially, and then, um, and then uh, repeated antifungal regimens uh, failed, and she developed resistance and then required um, addition, um, more advanced uh, therapy when they're able to treat her. Uh, she spent her 19th birthday in the intensive care unit. She left the ICU, uh, returned, and this is now in September, returned to the children's oncology floor where she was then diagnosed with a drug resistant pseudomonas infection under her arm. Um, she uh, successfully underwent a bone marrow transplant for the AML, which was successful, and that was great. However, the pseudomonas still plagued her. She uh, uh, became resistant to conventional therapy, was needed to be treated with uh, a more toxic drug, colistin. Uh, the infection spread to her lungs, and although she initially respond, appeared to respond, uh, she required a tracheotomy procedure, blood oxygen levels to drop. She went to septic shock infection and, uh, and then succumbed to, um, to the disease. But she didn't die of AML because her transplant was successful. She died of a drug resistant infection. And so this is in fact an all too familiar story. And for uh, the clinicians who, uh, who are participating today, 
uh, especially those dealing with hemologic malignancies. This is an all too familiar story of uh, multi of drug resistance, bacterial, fungal, uh, and uh, and and the inability to really be able to control these infections effectively. And I, I mentioned patient stories because it's really important again to to humanize what what we're talking about. The IDSA has uh, a nice section on patient stories about drug resistance. We don't quite have that on the fungal side, although uh, the the life. Um, a group um, leading international fungal education has uh, patient stories about fungal infections and, and, they're, and they're really worth, worth reading and understanding what we're dealing with. Now, really to better understand attitudes about, um, about drug resistance, uh, it, it's best to, to, to get a perspective as to how people think about antibiotics. So this is now a survey that was done uh, about 1,100 respondents uh, asking consumers about, you know, what do you know about drug resistance? And in fact, as you can see in the middle here, 90% of the consumers agree that uh, they understand that, uh, that it's sometimes difficult to cure bacterial infections because uh, some of the bacteria become resistant to one or more of the antibiotics that are used to treat them. And so that's that's a, that's a very good thing. People have a really good awareness of antibacterial resistance. They also, 12% uh, of them have said that they have a friend or family member that have been, ex uh, that have been treated for, uh, for an antibiotic um, resistant bacteria. But the question is, how would patients uh, with fungal infections respond? Uh, and, and, that's, and that's, you know, what we don't know because we don't really engage our community in antifungal drug resistance. So let's, let's look at this a little further. This, in, this same, in this same study, 50% um, of, of the people said they had a good knowledge about antibiotics and their use, uh, but only half of them said that they've talked to a healthcare provider about the dangers of antibiotic resistance when muted. So even though people understand drug resistance is a problem, most clinicians, when they're prescribing antibiotics, in fact, won't, don't talk to their patients about uh, the problems of, of drug resistance with the potential for drug resistance. And no doubt on the antifungal side, uh, the, the problem is, is more significant. And it's not just for uh, severely ill patients. Um, here, this is now a dermatology clinic where antibiotics are used to treat excuse me, to treat acne for extended period of time, there is this awareness of antibiotic resistance amongst these patients. And then this is another study that looked at about a thousand respondents, about 800 patients, about and 200 uh, parents of uh, adolescent patients. And overall, 86% of the respondents could I correctly identify what antibiotic resistance says. You know, they you know, said when antibiotics and or antibacterials are used for a period of time, the infectious organism adapts to them, becomes immune, resulting in less effective treatment. That's really good. People have a good perspective and sense of what antibiotic resistance is. However, when queried further, the, the patients indicated, uh, patients with acne and their parents, that more should be done to educate the public about the potential risks of antibiotic use and the availability of antibiotic-free options. So these individuals are concerned about antibiotic resistance and want alternatives. And so discussions uh, um, with patients about therapies, resistance, and alternatives are really uh, critical for dermatology, but obviously beyond. So we know that colonizing organisms, organisms become infecting organisms, and certainly in the mycology field from the oral cavity, lungs, gastrointestinal tract, and skin, this is a problem. Repeated drug exposures can seed uh, these microbiome reservoirs with resistant organisms. We know about environmental pathogens like aspergillus that have become azole resistant and can, and can um, then lead to drug resistant infections. But the question is, as a community, 
do we really need to do a better job of educating patients about the threat of antibiotic resistance? Do we really, do we need to just have a better dialogue or a dialogue at all, which frequently doesn't happen? So the question then is, you know, what's, what do people think is responsible for antifungal drug resistance? Is it the environment? Is it the overuse of drugs? Is it laboratory born? Is it due to the critically ill who develop resistance? Is it the healthcare staff who, who um, move it around uh, hospitals or from nursing homes to hospitals? The answer is we just don't know because we rarely discuss this in public. We don't really have the conversation. And unlike in the antibiotic world, where it's a constant conversation, we just don't have this conversation. So I'm just going to conclude by saying, as a community of medical, public health, and research professionals, we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to educate the, pu the public? Now, parents understand that with their kids, when their kids break through with, um, when, they have, when they have otitis media and they break through with antibiotics, they understand that they become drug resistant. Fine, they need a different, they need, they need a different uh, antibiotic. They fear MRSA and KPCs and C. diff and pseudomonas, and they know about all these as potential superbugs, and they're plastered all over magazines and, and the newspapers. And some have even heard that Candida auris is a superbug. But nine out of 10 people will tell you it's a bacterium, not a fungus. So what do we do? Well, we say to people, self-diagnose, self-treat for vaginitis, vaginitis. Don't give it a second thought because antifungals are sold over the counter and you don't need a prescription. So resistance is not an issue. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. These are not serious drugs. We have to change that narrative. And we have to change the narrative by engaging the public in a dialogue that educates them about fungal infections and antifungal drug resistance. And most importantly, we have to learn what other fields have learned, the HIV, TB fields, and others, that if we really want to make a difference here, we have to make our patients, their families, and the community partners in this solution. And overall, that will lift our field and help create the incentives that we need to overcome antifungal drug resistance. So I'll stop here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, David. It's uh, Tom Harrison here. So um, uh, please, anyone who wants to raise any questions or comments on David's presentation, please uh, initially put, put stuff in the chat if you would. David, that was a great, uh, you know, uh, uh, piece to try and uh, stressing the importance of public engagement, I think, and the patient's belief. And um, we're, we, as we recognize, we're working in a, in a, a somewhat underfunded, uh, underappreciated area. So I think it's, we've got to start with our patient, the patients we serve, haven't we, in, in trying to get more profile and focus on this uh, problem. I mean, maybe I can just kick off. I mean, do you have, I mean, when you talk to patients with serious life-threatening fungal infection, I mean, I mean, do you, do you have a, a, a narrative to differentiate what they're suffering from, from bacterial infections? Because, uh, you know, as we agree, there are, there are important differences. So with, with, in, with our, our network, as we have, so we have a, um, a large number of patients um, who are undergoing a uh, transplant for hematologic malignancies, um, solid organ transplants. And we try to have that dialogue that when they get a, a fungal infection, that it is, uh, it's, it's different than a bacterial infection. Um, the therapies appear to be the same, uh, but the same, they, they have the same risk that they can be resistance. Uh, and there's actually fewer options. So um, we, we, uh, to the best that we can, we try to have this discussion uh, with the patients if we're able, but certainly uh, with, with the family. So the education piece, uh, certainly for our network, is, uh, is an important component. Yeah. Do, do you have like a community engagement, a community of, of patients that you've built up over the years? 
Well, I'm actually new at this new at this institution, so the answer is no. Uh, mm -hmm. Others in the audience probably do, uh, uh, who can 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 speak to that better than me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.